Welcome once again to Around the Conference. I'm your host, Paul Scovell. It's always a privilege and a joy to be able to be here with you. And thank you once again for allowing us into your uh, living rooms. Um, certainly, God has been good to us. Today, we're going to be talking about public campus ministry. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians reminds us that we, as God's children, ought to invite people to follow us as we follow Christ. It's a part of the mission of every Christian to be an example to others in such a way that they are excited and attracted to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in particular, today we want to discuss this matter as it relates to young people and young Christians who are studying on public campuses. How do they minister? And can they minister to those with whom they rub shoulders with from day to day in the classroom, especially in the context of this liberal society in which we exist? Our public campus ministry coordinator in the youth department is Pastor Jamal Franklin. And we want to welcome him to our program today, Pastor. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you again here <laughs> yeah, on our well. program. I noticed that you have a little pin yes. on your tie, and you gave me yes. one of those that is symbolic Correct. of the public campus ministry. What does that pin say to one who sees it? Oh, the pin, the PCM pin, is the first version of the ambassador pin produced by the Inter-American Division. And uh, last year at our um, PCM day, we gave pins to Adventist students to invest them or enlist them in ambassadorship on their public campuses. And the PCM stands for Public Campus Ministries. Um, the Bible, you can see it stands for the Bible. Um, we have three flames that stands for the three angels' message. We have a graduation and three tassels that represents excellence. And we use this pin to kind of identify what our mission is um, in terms of being ambassadors for Christ in the mission field, which is the public campuses and universities that our Adventist students reside on. Um, you talk about mission and mission field. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading a book the other day called Transformational. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, one of the, mm -hmm. the high points in that book that the author brings out is that the, the Christian focus should always be on mission. Correct. Because that's why we exist. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jesus called his disciples and he mm -hmm. said, I want you to, to follow me and I yeah. want to make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. um, to what degree or what level of consciousness would you say um, our young people have when it comes to this aspect of our lives, missional, mm -hmm. um, which carries us outside of the four walls of the church? Okay. How do they see this? Um, as young people, it changes our perspective mm -hmm. when we are faced with challenges to our faith, when we are faced with um, crisis and issues that conflict with our morals and values, instead of thinking of being attacked, when we have the perspective of being a mission, we see it as an opportunity for witness. And I think the, the, the missional, transmissional aspect of our generation today um, helps our young people to keep the right perspective and deal with issues that we face from day to day. It's not, it's, not, it's not about being attacked and it's not about having to stand on a podium and, and preach, thus save the Lord and Christ is coming and repent and be baptized. Now it goes beyond that. It goes beyond living a life mm -hmm. where we become what we preach. And I think that's harder to do than actually preaching because preaching, you know, you preach and you go home, but having to live it out every single day in the bad and in the good when faced with opposition and oppression, it, it, it kind of helps young people to, to keep the right perspective on their studies and help them to remember their focus, the primary focus of why they're placed, where they're placed. Now, uh, one, of the, one of the cries of members of the church in general, and I suspect our young people as well, um, is that they would like to have more training mm -hmm. in, in how to do this uh, and, and 
given what you've said about the fact that uh, just living, mm -hmm. um, how or to what degree are we as a church helping them through um, training initiatives um, to be able to relate? Because um, even though you talk about um, we just need to live, mm -hmm. um, when we live, we come upon real life circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, so how does a, a young person react um, for instance, if they were to get into a classroom, a science classroom, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the foundation of that class is that we just are accidents mm -hmm. that are accidentally hatched by the heat of the sun. Um, there's no design. Mm -hmm. um, something just, you know, collided and, mm -hmm. and we're here. Um, are we looking at ways by which we can um, help people our young people to think about this and, and how do they respond to it? What's happening in that area? So this year we, had, we <coughs> held two forums to address those particular issues. One was held at, at um, Grantstown earlier this year where they had a fundamental belief forum and Johnson Park and Grantstown came together with the university students and AYs and we had a very intensive course on looking at why we believe what we believe in terms of Seventh-day Adventists. And we look at the idealist, we look at the futuristic, we look at the historical views of interpretation of the Bible. So we were able to help young, young Adventist youth who go to public campuses understand that in a classroom setting, you have different interpretations of the Bible, different interpretations of the worldview, mm -hmm. different interpretations of classwork. And while you have to present what you're taught, the professors still expect you to present which view that you hold and be able to defend it. So we were able to educate them and give them resources to be able to research and to also implement that research and when they're doing their paperwork. Um, we also ha held a, a recent um, forum at Hillview where we dealt with ethics and beliefs, mm -hmm. how, how to deal with ethical issues versus what we believe, uh, believe as a church. And we were able to present um, faith and science projects um, done by Seventh day Adventists. We presented them the Geoscience Seventh day Adventist Research Institute, for example. We gave them the websites they can go on Dialogue Adventist so they can be able to read articles and use these articles in their coursework at universities so that they can present what they learn, mm -hmm. present what where they stand in terms of where we stand as Seventh Adventists, but back it up with research, back it up with scientific Adventist research, especially when it comes to creationism, especially when it comes to evolution, especially when it comes to theo-evolution, um, theo especially when it comes to euthanasia, especially when it comes to abortion. And in fact, how do we relate to other young people who are battling with these issues that may be in conflict with my views? Do I abandon them because they, they have a different view to, than I do? Do I assist them? Do I help them? How far can I go? Can I still be friends with them? And, you know, recently I had to deal with a situation with a friend of mine whose girlfriend had an abortion. And I was just teaching a course on how to deal with that, and it hit me that I had to deal with it myself. So it helps us to realize, you know, that as young people, as university students, we're going to be faced with issues, and we have to be educated. We have to be knowledgeable. We have to research. We have to know the different views of interpretation and know where we stand also as Adventists so that we can present our views respectfully with scientific research. Yeah, and that's, that's vital um, because uh, people tend to, to come to respect mm -hmm. you once you, you have um, a level of, of facts Correct. that you are relating to. Correct. And, and of course, this, this needs to be ongoing. Um, given that you've been having some of these workshops, are there any other activities that um, our young people on our campuses have been engaged in um, from the time of the formation uh, or, uh, and the coming together of this, this segment of, of the church? A number of our young people have been engaged in uh, running for the student government. Um, Stanley Fillor was a senator last year. He graduated from University of the Bahamas this year. So we've been promoting young people to run for these, these centers of influence. Let me put these positions of influence, not to be shy, mm -hmm. um, not, not to be shy to, to stand up for what they believe and represent their student body, but to, to get involved in academic leadership. We've also had um, young people who've been involved in university choir, like Daniel Bostwick, 
Um, you can go on their Facebook and you can see how they're very involved in these extracurricular activities that helps them to understand the importance of not, because when I was growing up, we used to be very segregated from, you know, public students. We wanted to be on our own and stay to ourselves. And now they're kind of like um, missionary spies. They have to immerse themselves amongst each other those who are Adventists, those who are non-Adventists, mixed together in good Christian godly activities and be able to be an example to them. And also, I think this is perhaps one of the best examples, academic excellence. I think in order for us to be effective in what we preach, we must have academic excellence. And we are glad to be able to report we had a number of valedictorians this year in from, from high schools who were valedictorians and who were and who are Seventh-day Adventists very active. Selena Hunter, for example, in North Andrews, I was the valedictorian, um, not only her high school, but in, t in the entire district of education. And we have Johnson Davilma, also from Doris Johnson High mm -hmm. School, who was also valedictorian. Mm -hmm. So we are very impressed with what our young people are doing in keeping academic excellence and participating in church and being active both in church and in the community. You know, Daniel was probably about 18, Yeah. Um, around uh, university age level, mm -hmm. um, he exhibited a tremendous um, amount of poise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, he exhibited a, a, a high degree of, of intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was called to give an account mm -hmm. of himself, yeah. Outside of the confines of his church walls, uh, outside of the confines of, of his church home, mm -hmm. uh, which speaks to the fact that uh, young people can, mm -hmm. if properly guided from very early, Correct. be able to withstand mm -hmm. the pressures yeah. that come upon them no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. What are some of the pressures that our young people have on public campuses um, when they find themselves there? Something we want to talk about as we go into the next segment. I don't know if uh, you can think about that um, because it would seem to me that sometimes we, we find our young people giving in mm -hmm. to the pressures. Sure. But we're going to talk about that on the next side of this no program. Um, we want you to keep that thought in mind. and want you to stay right there because we're going to continue this conversation as we talk about public, public campus ministry and uh, what is happening in this area of mission work uh, within uh, the Church of God, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, here in the South Bahamas Conference. Thank you for staying with us. Public Campus Ministry Day 2018 will be held at the Johnson Park Seventh-day Adventist Church on Sabbath, July the 14th, 2018. With us today is the speaker for PCM Day 2018. Please tell us your name. My name is Alexandria Scott. And what did you study at, and where did you study, what did you study, and which church do you go to? I studied at the University of the Bahamas and I majored in history and geography education and I attend the Grandstown Seventh-day Adventist Church. The great Grandstown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now tell us, what should our university students expect to hear from the word that you will share with us on PCM Day? Well, they could definitely look forward to a testimony that would also be an encouragement for them to continue their studies in school. We look forward to seeing you at PCM Day, Sabbath, July the 14th, 2018 at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Don't miss it because you belong. Welcome once again to Around the Conference and thank you for staying. Uh, we're here in the second segment of our program, uh, Around the Conference. And we're talking to Pastor Jamal Franklin and relating uh, the issues and concerns um, as it relates to our public campus ministry initiative. Just before we took a break, Pastor, we were looking at um, what might be some of the pressures or um, pressure points that our young people are faced with on uh, these campuses. And how do they compare with um, maybe those who are not on those campuses, maybe on, on, on Adventist campuses mm -hmm. or, or Christian campuses? 
What are, what are, what are some of the scenarios that we could anticipate? Well, we have um, three major scenarios, um, particularly. Um, one, academic peer pressure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many of their project works are done in groups. So you have that pressure to fulfill uh, assignments in groups. And sometimes you have to meet on Sabbath. Sometimes they're, they're pressured to meet on Sabbath. Sometimes they're pressured to have to compromise. And so helping them to be able to navigate and negotiate those expectations causes academic peer pressure. Navigate and negotiate. Navigate and negotiate. To navigate work. is say up front uh -huh. what you are able to do and what you are not and negotiate by making a compromise in terms of alternatives, given alternatives. It's not enough to just say, I'm Seventh Adventist, so I can't meet with the group on Friday night or Sabbath. You must also negotiate in giving an alternative. Maybe Sunday, maybe you'll work an extra on Thursday. You know, you might be able to go the extra mile and give, right. a, give an alternative. And um, so we've been educating young people to do that. Um, we also have um, sororities, extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. and in particular the sororities being involved in uh, um, sororities which is becoming a very um, phenomenal thing here in the Bahamas for us and um, we hope to address whether or not a Seventh Adventist should be part of a sorority on July the 14th at our PCM Day Forum. And uh, we also have um, classwork and philosophies that a lot of our Adventist youth may not have been exposed to going to an Adventist high school or we even in church, like evolution, abortion, euthanasia, what does the church believe in terms of a lot of philosophies and, and, and ideologies that they are presented with. And, and that is a challenge because now they are forced to have to self-educate and self-research to find out, hey, what does my church believe? Mm -hmm. What should I believe as a Seventh-day Adventist? Is, is, is the matter of tattooing something that is a pressure point on our campuses? Tattooing as well, which is one of the elements that come along with being a part of a sorority because okay. sororities, you know, they like to have certain marks on their bodies, certain okay. identification marks, and, and that is one of the issues as well. Yeah, because um, I notice a lot of college, yep. um, yeah. both uh, abroad and, and, mm -hmm. and, and here, uh, it, it piercings, to, it, it escalate yeah. piercings and yeah. all this type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's becoming a challenge, and and hence why we we decided to address the sororities because as as you said earlier, um, it opens up to a whole number of issues mm -hmm. that previously we never addressed, and maybe now is the time to address it, yeah. so that our young people are able to navigate and negotiate what they believe. Right, and of course um, that always comes easiest when we have certain principles mm -hmm, that are in place, which I, I'm sure will be addressed at that forum. Correct. Uh, one of the other things is standing up for the Sabbath. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things we've, 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 we've been challenged with. I think your office, PARL, um, does a tremendous job at navigating and negotiating mm -hmm. those issues <laughs> because they're, they're very frequent. And um, I guess the feeling of being in the minority, because sometimes we have young people who are willing to stand up, but sometimes there's some young people who may go the other route and compromise on Sabbath, which makes it difficult for those who really want to stand. So being part of the major minority, the majority is always a challenge. And um, yeah, those are some of the issues. When we think about um, the pressure points, some of our young people might rationalize, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm, I mean, um, mm -hmm. I, I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. How do we distinguish between um, service, um, being a reflector of Christ, mm -hmm. and, and love the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they separate entities, um, all distinct by themselves, or, or do they connect to each other and, and one impacts the other? Well, some scholars may dispute that they are separate. Personally, I believe they're all interconnected mm -hmm. because of transformational. When, when, when you think about the word missionary, everything is connected. Nothing is separate from the other. And um, so they're all connected. Even the careers that our young people choose to study. Mm -hmm. uh, we designed an app called Go where young people can download it if they have an Android phone for now. And we connected Bible verses that are attached to every career that is offered so they can see that the Bible 
thought about the career they were going to choose because the Bible is thinking that their career is an avenue to help them not only get into the kingdom but to lead someone else into the kingdom because sometimes as young people we choose careers not thinking about how can my career be used as an avenue to witness, to minister, to be able to, to call someone out of spiritual darkness into his marvelous light and, and, and once we connect their careers and their passions and their drives and their talents and their gifts to, to be an avenue to be able to be part of what it is that we preach as a Seventh-day Adventist church, the Tree Angels message, it helps to bring about that balance that they so seek. And, and that's a very important point. Um, even before a, a young person um, decides that they're going to go to, 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 to college or mm -hmm. to university, they need to, and even at high school, yeah. um, they need to understand how is what I am thinking about doing mm -hmm. going to be applied to my greater calling, Correct. which Correct. is to be missional. Correct. You know, Correct. can I be a good bartender and be missional? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. today you have to you have to go to school to learn how to yeah. be a bartender, yeah. Yeah. you know, because yeah. you have to be able to mix the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, so can I can I effectively mm -hmm. um, execute yeah. this yeah. level of employment mm -hmm. or work or, and training and still reflect Christ? Yeah. So, so this has to be something that is um, thought about from a very early age. Correct. As a matter of fact, in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, mm -hmm. when the Bible says, train up a child in the, the way, in Correct. the way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they need to decide what the way is. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the way is not their way, but mm -hmm. it is God's, God's way. way. Yeah. You know, um, what is God's way for me? Mm -hmm. Sometimes even parents uh, get a little confused with this because yeah. they want their child to go in a particular way, mm -hmm. which is their way, yeah. but, not, yeah. but might not be God's way. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. You see know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we have to check and ask ourselves a question, what is God's way? And that's another pressure point because yeah. many young people are studying the way of their parents, right? not God's way. Right. <laughs> and that's another pressure point. While the parents' <laughs> way might be God's way, it doesn't have to yeah, be, yeah. you know, because God has um, endowed us with gifts and mm -hmm. talents and mm -hmm. abilities in His way. Yeah. And we have to seek Him in order to find that out. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of stuff that, mm -hmm. that, that, that has to be done in this area, a lot of Correct. work. Correct. And so we, we thank God for what is happening already. Um, now, you, you're planning a, a PCM day. Correct. Um, when is that going to be taking place? Public Campus Ministry Day will be held at Johnson Park on Sabbath, July the 14th, um, 2018. And that's an annual day where we have the entire day geared towards Adventist students who, stu who are studying on public campuses and universities. The speaker is always a university student or recent university graduate. Mm -hmm. And in the afternoon, we um, come together to have a forum on a relevant issue that our students are facing. This year, Alexandria Scott has um, accepted to be the speaker. And we are quite interested to hear what her story is mm -hmm. studying at the University of the Bahamas and having to work to, 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 um, to pursue her, her dream, her academic dream. So it will be an exciting time. Great. Um, and this is going to take place where? At Johnson Park, Seventh-day Adventist Church. What date is that going to be again? Sabbath, July the 14th. Sabbath, July 2018. 14th. And, I, and um, Sister Scott yes. will be the speaker. Yes. A recent graduate of, of University, University of, of the Bahamas. Bahamas. Yeah. And what was her area? She studied um, history and geography. Okay. Yeah, great. so she studied to be a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Um, beyond this uh, day, where do you see um, public campus ministries focusing and um, leading to um, as we look forward to the future? Well, two areas we have as long-term objectives. Right now, Pastor Yon Darsit is conducting a um, small group ministry at a high school. I think it's a primary school, Uriah Matfee? Yeah, elementary. Elementary mm -hmm. school. And um, so we're testing that out because that is something that we can apply also to University of the Bahamas, BTVI, and other colleges and campuses. And also, number two, to have an Adventist Christian Fellowship at the University of the Bahamas for our Adventist students to be able to have their own Christian 
worship fellowship experience to be able to carry out mission projects, evangelistic projects, to be able to network amongst their friends and professors and to be able to share the gospel in a very attractive way within their mission field on the campus. Yeah. You know, um, when, when we talk about pressure points, um, I think uh, six or seven, uh, maybe even up to ten of our students um, in the medical field at, at the University of West Indies mm -hmm. um, this year, um, and we are so proud of them, uh, took a stand Correct. Uh, in regards to um, taking exams on Sabbath mm -hmm. and determined that they would not do so Correct. and um, uh, had to, to, to adjust mm -hmm. their thinking, um, relocate their thoughts, uh, which then followed with a relocation of their physical beings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to another site outside of the country to, to take their exams, which was being offered on another day other than on Sabbath, mm -hmm. as the, the university here would not um, accommodate. Uh, and and we're, we're, we're very proud mm -hmm. of these students, and we're happy to report that, that all of them Pass. successfully yeah. passed their exams. Nashabuto, Kara, uh, Rachel, and Teoria. Yes. Brave and, young people. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I think we are seeing from our young people, not think, I know, we are seeing from our young people this level of, of Danielism. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. want to call correct, it? Correct. Where correct. they are able to stand up even in the lion's den. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to continue to encourage them. Correct. And to pray for them that God will continue to use them in a very special way. Mm -hmm. Well, um, our time is just about up. Um, if you would, just share a, a thought with our viewing audience, especially to our young people in and on our uh, public campuses. Well, 1 Corinthians 11 one says, Be followers of Christ even as I follow Christ. We want to encourage you to join the movement and become part of the movement, and you will be a change agent that changes not only the world, but prepares the world for the second coming of Christ. God bless you, and remember, you are a PCM ambassador until Christ returns. Now, you mentioned about an app. If they want to get connected to that app, what do they have to do? They just have to go to the Play Google Play Store and download G-O-W Bahamas. Go G app. G-O-W Bahamas. Bahamas. Good. And they can download the app. Great. Thank you for, for, You're welcome. Thank you for, for your leadership us. in this area. God, and may God, God, God continue to bless you and the young people. Thank you so much. You've been with us here on Around the Conference. And again, Jesus says, follow me. Um, Paul actually said it, follow me as I follow Christ. Who are you following? And remember... When we follow Jesus, he leads us into the paths of righteousness, of love, and of peace.